last few weeks, increasing numbers of migrants have crossed Ghana's borders to escape the continuing economic crisis in Venezuela. The government is taking steps to ensure that they are treated as humanely as possible by providing supplies to meet their basic needs. On this week's Info Hub In-Depth, we take a look at the steps the Civil Defense Commission is taking to address the matter of these migrants. Roundabouts Approaching a roundabout when you approach a roundabout, you must use your indicator if you intend to turn left or right or make a U-turn at the roundabout. You must give other road users sufficient notice of your intent to turn. Entering a roundabout. When entering a roundabout, you must slow or stop to give way to any vehicle already in the roundabout. You must also continue to use your indicators if you intend to turn left or right or make a U-turn. Turning left. When turning left, you must indicate left on approach and be travelling in the left-hand lane unless there are road markings with other instructions. Stay in the left lane and exit in the left lane. Turning right. When turning right, you must indicate right on approach and be travelling in the right-hand lane unless there are road markings with other instructions. Making a U-turn. When using a roundabout to make a U-turn, you must approach in the right lane and signal right. Changing lanes in a roundabout. Drivers may change lanes in a roundabout if they wish. The usual road rules for changing lanes apply. You must use your indicator and give way to any vehicle in the lane you are entering. Going straight ahead. You don't need to signal when approaching the roundabout if you are going straight ahead. You may approach the roundabout from either the left or right lane unless there are road markings with other instructions. Exiting a roundabout. As when you exit a road, you must signal left when leaving a roundabout, if it is practical to do so, and you should stop indicating as soon as you have exited the roundabout. However, when you are travelling straight ahead on a small single-lane roundabout, it may be impractical to indicate when exiting. Neighbouring Venezuela has been facing a socio-economic and political crisis. This has been the worst economic crisis the oil-rich nation has faced and among one of the worst recorded in the Americas. The lives of the Venezuelan population has been severely disrupted. Crime has escalated, companies and businesses have closed down, there is little to no food or basic supplies leaving men, women and children to suffer. In their bid to survive, Venezuelans have been fleeing into neighbouring countries, Guyana, Brazil and Colombia. In Guyana, they have been entering at various points in Barimawaini Region 1, Kiyuni Mazuruni Region 7 and Upper Takatu Upper Sequibo Region 9. According to the Geneva Convention, they cannot be described as refugees, but rather as migrants or people arriving in difficult circumstances. The United Nations High Commission has produced a list of recommended principles and guidelines on human rights at international borders. It states that all migrants, regardless of their legal status, how they arrived at the border, where they came from or what they look like, are entitled to enjoy their human rights. Guideline 5 in particular outlines human rights in the context of immediate assistance. The guideline details the recommendation for the state to provide immediate assistance where necessary, it states that this should include medical care, adequate food and water, blankets, clothing and sanitary items. It notes that the provision of medical screening is a priority for migrants at international borders. To honour these guidelines, in July, the government, through the Ministry of Citizenship, established a multi-agency committee comprising of the Guyana Police Force, the Civil Defence Commission, the Ministries of Communities, Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Public Health and Social Protection. This body aims to address the needs of migrants. The current situation in Region 1, 7 and 9 can be considered a complex humanitarian situation which has uh, security implication, foreign policy implications, implication for humanitarian support in terms of providing food, shelter, health implication. And the Civil Defense Commission, in collaboration with the Ministry of Citizenship and several other agencies, uh, mistaken a multi-agency approach to 
provide the necessary supplies to the affected person in those regions. A joint statement from the CDC and the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, notes relief efforts includes the provision of supplies to enhance the capacity of the affected regions by providing basic assistance to meet the initial needs of migrants. It was noted in the statement that relief supplies for shelter, water, sanitation and hygiene are being procured within Guyana and at a cost of U.S. $30,000. The supplies are expected to benefit an estimated 60 families per region, some 900 families. Migrants have been settling in indigenous border communities with the majority settling in Region 1. These include Cannes Hill, Smith Creek, Imbotero, Powaikuru, Kamwata and Whitewater. The Civil Defence Commission, together with the International Organisation for Migration and other stakeholder agencies, recently led a three-day exercise in Region 1 where they distributed supplies. Acting Director General of the CDC, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig. Basically to provide some amount of relief to the communities um, where you have an influx of Venezuelans. And we'll be given uh, food supplies, um, shelter items, sanitation items um, to those locations. The exercise began on Thursday, July 26, at Cannes Hill, Mabaruma, where 10 families received hampers with much-needed supplies. The exercise continued on Friday in Puaikuru. This settlement is located in a creek two hours from Mabaruma along the Kaituma River. Here, eight migrant families received hampers. <laughs> Families in Kamwata, Imbotero, and Smith Creek also received hampers. During the distribution, 260 Venezuelans were recorded as being settled in Region 1. More than 40 arrived on Sunday, August 5, bringing the total number of recorded migrants in Barimawaini Region 1 to over 300. Heads of the various indigenous communities thanked the Civil Defense Commission and the International Organization for Migration for the assistance. Something that never happened, happened in this place today. And I'm much happy with who do that, with that. I'm happy to the donation. Happy. Because right now they don't have nothing to eat. I have to help them a little what I have. And I think that they're happy today because I will bring, I support them today. They're more happy. And we will continue to live this life. How long we live on the face of this world? If they're not going back, we're going to live happy with them. This is a great gift and a blessing, I must say, for these people that came from Venezuela, because on behalf of the the starvation right now that they are facing in Venezuela, so we think that this this shall be a good help for them. I feel really comfortable, real nice with these gifts. So thank you for all these gifts, sir. Very nice. For this will be, be we could cooperate together. Region One Regional Chairman Brentnell Ashley lauded the efforts of the CDC and IOM and the other agencies that have been assisting the region in dealing with the influx of migrants. I view this entire activity or exercise as one that is welcoming, um, since we've had a large number of uh, waro. Um, Waro brothers and sisters coming uh, from the Amakurun or Inoko. Um, as a region, we are grateful. The RDC is very grateful to the Civil Defense Commission uh, as well as the International Organization for Migration, which would have come on board um, alongside other donor agencies such as Hand in Hand Insurance Company. Um, and the initial stage, we would have had some assistance from Food for the Poor. And besides that, we also have donations coming from public-spirited citizens who are um, very concerned 
uh, for the livelihood of these persons who are coming to Guyana. And so <clears throat> while we note that uh, the supplies that are given, that is provided through um, the assistance of CDC, which would have formulated through central government. We still may be looking forward for additional um, assistance since, for instance, at Imbatero we would have seen um, an increase in the number of families that are presently in that community. And here at Smith Creek, we have 20. <coughs> We also would have seen an increase of families at Kamwata this morning um, while we were there. And also yesterday we would have been able to share at um, Powaikuru. And so not only is it utilizing the resources from CDC and all the do the agency, but the Regional Democratic Council would have been a very um, important um, partner in this entire exercise because um, all, all parts would have come on board, and so that's we're very, very grateful for all the support we, we're being given, and I hope that the support will continue to come from these agencies. Private companies are also pitching in, lending their support. On Tuesday, August 7, the first to come on board was the Single Trading Company Limited, who donated 51 hampers to the CDC, which will be distributed to more families in the Burima Waini region. Chief Executive Officer of the Single Trading Company Limited, Frank Diabru, said the company's corporate social responsibility is to help those in need. The single will always stand by the needy. We've been doing this for years. To help those who need is to help. To help who have is, tr is to be famous. We're not looking for fame. We're looking for help. There was one time in my life that Venice, Guyana was this in a similar situation, going to Suriname, Trinidad, Jamaica, and elsewhere in search for an essential food item. So now that God has helped me that I can offer, it's, I'm delighted so we can give back to the, the this year to the Venezuelans. Whenever there is an occasion, we will stand by them. And whenever we got a good crop, whenever we got a good surplus, our, 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 our social corporate responsibility will always offer to those who need. Receiving the donation was Acting CDC Director General Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig. He encouraged more private entities to join the initiative. It's going to be a, a long haul because these persons are in dire needs and they are coming from Venezuela and are occupying or being occupied in those regions. Um, they would need continuous support in the form of food supplies, health, um, documentations, etc. So gestures like this, the Self Defense Commission welcome. Um, it shows that agencies such as the Sinker Limited is taking the corporate responsibility very seriously and on behalf of the, the government of Guyana and the, the committee, the, the national committee that deals with the influx of Venezuelans, I would like to thank you for the support. I would also like to encourage corporate Guyana to continue to support those people in needs, not only the Guyanese in needs, but the Venezuelans, the Venezuelans that are in needs. In addition to providing items for relief, Ministry of Public Health officials are conducting medical screenings for migrants entering the borders. This is to ensure that they are immunized and are not bringing any diseases with them. The medical screening process is one of the mandatory guidelines outlined by the United Nations High Commission's list of recommended principles and guidance on human rights at international borders. Minister of Citizenship Winston Felix stated it is the government's intention that Venezuelan migrants be treated as humanely as possible. It is not government's intention to send back the Venezuelans, but we expect them to arrive here uh, by legitimate means and at legitimate ports of entry. We have had, we have put systems in place to register them once we find them in Guyana, once we find them in the Northwest, whether they are legal or illegal in the past, they were candidates to be charged, to be deported. On this occasion, in, and in view of these circumstances in Venezuela, we are not treating them like that. 
While the migrants are being accommodated by residents of the Amerindian settlements, living conditions are less than favorable, with many living in camped makeshift quarters. Minister Felix emphasized that systems will be put in place to register the migrants, ensure their humane treatment and provide a reasonable state of comfort. He noted that while some migrants are being accommodated by residents in indigenous communities, the government intends to take it a stage farther. Officials will identify areas in which they can control the inflow of Venezuelans and settle them in a controlled manner. The Minister of Citizenship said once settled, the government will take steps to move the migrants into cash crop farming. It is intended that we develop a like a homestead, right? where families are accumulated, individuals are accumulated, and eventually we can move them into cash crop farming. Right? We can encourage that. So that in the first instance they can feed themselves, and if they have surplus they can sell. Right? We, we're looking at crops for their sustenance, immediate needs, right? Once we, once we get the little greens and ground provision growing, we know that they like um, cassava and they produce farine and all sorts of things from the cassava. We are in, once the homestead or the community of the space Venezuelans um, is established, then the next thing is to guide them into areas in which they can um, sustain themselves. Minister Felix will visit Region 1 to assess areas which would be ideal to settle the migrants. Meanwhile, Minister of State Joseph Harmon stated that the challenges being faced in Region 1 were brought to Cabinet's attention after a report on the migrant situation was produced by Minister Felix. Cabinet discussed the establishment of a multi-agency committee to pursue the establishment of humanitarian government-controlled centers for Venezuelan migrants entering Guyana and requesting international assistance in that regard. Coordination between the Guyana Police Force and the Ministry of Public Health to address health issues, including vaccination and immunization of the migrants and the distribution of relevant posters in the requisite language to assist in communication with the migrants were also discussed. Minister Harmon emphasized that the Ministry of Citizenship, in collaboration with the Guyana Police Force and other agencies, continues to monitor the arrival of migrants closely. While distributions and relief exercises are continuing in the Barima Waini region, the number of migrants settling in the Kayuni Mazaruni and Upper Takatu Upper Essequibo region are still being assessed. This brings us to the end of another edition of InfoHub In Depth. Join us again next week. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging, as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas. It is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana.